Indeed, none of his Navy medical reports before, during or after the war contain any suggestion of blindness, only short-sightedness and astigmatism. After the war, Hubbard went to Hollywood. As a successful science fiction author, he was a welcome visitor to the Los Angeles Science Fantasy Association. Its members recalled there was one power over the mind he undoubtedly did possess. Hypnotism. Ron Hubbard came to our club and he hypnotized all of the members except me. I, I wanted to re remain in present time and watch what was going on. And uh, I remember it was fascinating. He told one boy that he had a little kangaroo in the palm of his hands. And the boy was going all around showing everybody his little kangaroo that was hopping around. In writings and conversations, Hubbard began to speak of his new science of the mind. As Scientology's literature would later depict, Hubbard claimed that in addition to himself, he cured 11 other war veterans and restored sanity to 40 mental patients. Rumors are beginning to circulate that uh, this new science of mind, or this new philosophy, um, had a significance for mankind that was greater than the discovery of the wheel and equal in significance to the uh, discovery of fire. In the May 1950 edition of Astounding Science Fiction magazine, Hubbard published his stunning findings as fact. Dianetics was truly born. Thousands of letters poured into the magazine. In the meantime, Hubbard had been pounding the typewriter keys, putting his ideas into a 450-page book. It became a bestseller, and Dianetics a national craze. Hubbard's theory was that the human mind was bedeviled by engrams, memories of painful events, often imprinted before birth on the fetus. He claimed that under the direction of a Dianetics therapist, or auditor, as he called them, these engrams could be relived and then cleared from the mind. At this stage, Dianetics seemed just an exaggerated form of psychotherapy. Well, Dianetics was so popular because it, it promised a, a brave new world of everybody cleared, no more colds, no more eyeglasses, uh, cured me of a fear of dogs. Among the various things it, it was said to be able to do, was one person had lost a tooth. And through uh, uh, Dianetic auditing, he regrew the tooth. Um, and uh, almost any illness uh, could be cured. Schizophrenia could be cured. It seemed like it uh, opened up the whole world for everybody to become perfect human beings. Hubbard sold Dianetics auditing courses at $500 a go. The money was rolling in. But he was about to be accused of being a con man. With his book, Dianetics, a bestseller, Ron Hubbard was America's new guru. In August 1950, at a lecture hall in Los Angeles, he presented to a crowd of 6,000 the first person to be what he called a clear. She was a student called Sonia Bianca. As a clear, she was supposed to have total recall. So various members of the audience uh, called questions at her. Uh, could she remember what was said on page 217 of her physics textbook? She couldn't. Could she remember what she had, uh, had for breakfast uh, on the morning of uh, August 17th, 1946? She couldn't. Then various people uh, uh, called out for Hubbard to turn his back on her and see if she could remember the color of his tie. She couldn't. And uh, so that was... At that moment, the whole business sort of collapsed. People started leaving the auditorium. Suddenly, Hubbard was in trouble. He was accused of being a con man and Dianetics, a form of hypnotism, a technique at which he was so expert. He recruited a bright young PR woman, Barbara Kay, to repair his damaged image. Well, I've always found that 
it's the mind of a man that is most sexy. He was not really terribly physically attractive. Um, and he had a brilliant mind, no question about that. And I surely thought this was a man who was interested in marrying me and whom I might be interested in marrying. The intellectual attraction turned into an affair, and Barbara stayed with the 40-year-old Hubbard in an apartment in Hollywood. But by now Hubbard had left Polly and was married to his second wife, Sarah. He'd led Barbara to believe the marriage with Sarah was over. It wasn't. It was quite shocking when shortly after moving some of my things into that apartment, suddenly Sarah turned up with the baby and moved in. And um, I believe he was just as dismayed as I, because the next day when he came to the office with some of my belongings, like my uh, cologne and my toothbrush and so forth, um, he, um, he looked very downtrodden and... Um, apologetic and uh, not happy about the situation at all. Nevertheless, Barbara was kicked out. Dianetics was still in trouble. After the initial success of the book, money had rolled in and rolled out just as fast. Hubbard went to Palm Springs to try to recoup his fortune with a follow-up book. But the business his marriage with Sarah, and his writing were in crisis. He asked Barbara to come to him. He was certainly very depressed. He had lost the color in his face. His voice was, very, was hardly audible. He told me that he was totally blocked. He was working under a publisher's deadline, which he was failing to meet. He believed that his inability to write was due to the sinister interventions of other people, such as Sarah um, hypnotizing him in his sleep and telling him he will never write again. I found him paranoid, you know. He was clearly going through clinical depression. Worse followed. Hubbard and Sarah finally split up. Their divorce became a public sensation. Sarah accused Hubbard of torturing her and declared him insane. Hubbard denounced Sarah as a Russian spy and kidnapped her 13-month-old daughter. Hubbard ended up in Wichita in Kansas and got back in touch with Barbara. He sent me a wire telling me he'd been very ill and said he wanted to marry me. And uh, when I went to Wichita, he um, looked terrible. He had hair down to his shoulders and fingernails were like talons. And I found a note, a very sweet note, in my hotel room saying, Glad you're here, I love you. But I saw that I had a, a man there who had no prospects, for one thing, and um, that he had some psychiatric difficulties, and I didn't see much of a life for myself with that sort of individual. So I left. But Hubbard bounced back. He got married for the third time to one of his students, Mary Sue Whip. This marriage lasted, and Mary Sue would become his devoted deputy. Sarah, his second wife, was cleared from his memory, just like an engram. How many times have I been married? I've been married twice. And I'm very happily married just now. I have a lovely wife, and I have four children. My first wife is dead. What happened to your second wife? I never had a second wife. In 1952, Hubbard launched a revolutionary new product, Scientology. Dianetics originally covered this life only, but in a new book, Scientology, A History of Man, Hubbard revealed that wasn't enough. Human bodies were in fact inhabited by immortal souls, or thetans, going back to primeval times. Hubbard's son from his first marriage, Nibs, claimed the book stemmed from an unusual piece of drug-driven research. LRH gave his son Nibs some amphetamines, and Nibs started talking, he said. So really going, talking fast, you know, speed. And he kept talking, 
And he kept talking, and his dad kept giving him speed, and all of a sudden he was talking about the, his history when he was a clam and all these different situations in early Earth. And out of that came history of man. Suddenly you were nobody. Else. Oh, I've been back three lives, you know. I've been back seven, you know. I, I was in the time of Pharaoh. Well, when I got back to the individual who was a clam, lying on a primordial 